So my phone is doing this thing where it cuts out. And it just cut out. But look, she's got his tail. Hello. Hello, Missy. Which one are you? You're Pixie. That's Poppy over there. I am forever going to remember these two for sure because I've never had two pups that I couldn't tell apart, especially this late in the day. Whether it's personality or size or some weird mark that they have on them, these two, if one doesn't have a collar on, if that collar falls off, um, then I'm in big trouble. Uh-oh, he's thinking about ganging up on him. Jeannie's not going to like that. <laughs> Uh-oh, two brothers. Oh, watch the fence. So see, here's where it gets fun. I told you guys before they were just sleeping the whole time. I would video them for three minutes and say, look, you know, this is what they do. They eat and they sleep and they potty. But even at this young age, they are so rough already. Who's climbing up on me back there? Hey. See? I knew it. I knew somebody was moving papers around. So, yeah, so I was saying earlier, that's my biggest pet peeve. I mean, it's not a big deal. And then you move it, and then you pee on that carpet. That carpet's from there last night, uh, bedding, so I don't really care much. But um, So, if they run with the pee pads, it's fine, unless there's something on there. If they've pooped on there and they start running, what a mess. So when we get out into the foyer, usually that's when they say, oh, you know, this is fun. And so then I have a huge mess to clean up. But these guys have already are already doing it. There's nothing on there, so that's good. But five weeks old, that's three weeks of... Deal. Normally I have to deal with it for maybe a week. What's all that noise I hear? So I've set these guys their appointment up. Um, I don't remember what the date is. It's on my calendar. I'll send it in an email on the next update, which I was hoping would have been last night. But honestly, I went to bed last night, 9.40. That's an all-time early for me. And I was exhausted. Are you trying to bite me? I think they say don't bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's behind me, I think. Oops, sorry. So we have Pixie right here. And we have Poppy right here. And Poppy is probably the smaller of the two. So if the collar did fall off, I would just weigh them. She's up. Oh, somebody's pooping. Um, she's pooping again. Shoot. So uh, the older litter leaves next week. It's Saturday. So Thursday, the first pup leaves. Friday, two pups leave. And Monday, the remaining two pups leave at the same time. They're actually flying out together. These guys will go probably, I probably won't uh, enlarge their pen because then that really does um, work against us as it we go move towards paper training. So, hey, hey, come on, let them up. Um, so, um, 
I forget what I was going to say now. So, yeah, so, you know, then we'll start working. Like, this group over here, their pen has been stripped. I haven't laid down their new stuff. But uh, when I came down this morning, they had all pooped in the back end of the pen. And they, this area right here, where they sleep, I haven't changed that in probably, probably three weeks. Um, because they're not pooping and peeing where they sleep. So I have two culprits that like to play with the pee pads now. I know who you are. Hey. So I had to go online and order... I normally get to go to like TJ Maxx or I'll go to Walmart sometimes too. Um, oh, not TJ Maxx. I don't shop at TJ Maxx. I take that back. Um, uh, yeah, TJ Maxx. I was thinking Target. I don't shop at Target. So TJ Maxx, uh, Marshalls, you know, their doggy section in the back. They sometimes have great toys. That ugly frog that uh, hangs from the what we call the toy gym because it gives the dogs a workout. That ugly frog came from there. I couldn't think of where I got it. Um, and I've been looking for another one ever since because that one has seen better days. But um, they have sometimes like three toys on a, on a board. And they're nice heavy toys for the dogs to chew on. Well, my, my dog basket is empty. I, now that we have Raina, she has ripped through every toy. I don't know how that's happened. For 10 years, we've had dogs here, puppies. Never have I had a dog that just, as soon as they see a toy, they rip it apart. And that's Raina. So she's ripped through, I don't know, maybe 15 toys, 20 toys. Now my toy basket needs to be refilled. And I can't go shopping, so I had to go on and line and buy bulk. Um, so you see these guys biting like this, and uh, you know tomorrow it'll be Toby who is Hawk, and he'll be biting on Sunny. Um, so yeah, and they do play mighty mighty rough. It looks like they're hurting one another. This is how they establish their rank and everything else. We don't allow any of our pups to become too dominant. So if we see somebody really standing on top of another dog and growling and um, pinning them down, then we step in and uh, we break that up. We don't. We want everybody to be even, especially when they leave here. So if your dog establishes an attitude of dominance, you're not a, you're not putting in enough rules and boundaries for him. And don't let this little breed fool you. They are a tough breed. And they can manipulate and connive. So, and they're so cute. They can look at you with those eyes. Don't let them get away with stuff. Love on them, but make sure you have rules and boundaries. Work with them. Teach them to come and sit and um, and listen to you. Right? Right, Sunny? Hey. Sunny. Oh, I want a shot of your face. Oh, wow. Look at somebody over here being cute. Oh, I missed it. You guys know I struggle with photography. Could you just sit still and let me take the shot? What's that sound? What's that breeze? And of course, uh, a couple of my pups this time around are going into families with children. Uh, consider yourself lucky because I don't always place my pups with dog, with families with kids, especially very, very, very young kids. Um, well, are you going to potty? He's ready for bed, I bet. Any amount of money, he's going to go right back over there and start crying to go in. So anybody who thinks that crating is cruel, it's not. These guys actually have been in this pen all night and uh, I think I put them in last night at about 9 uh, they came out and they were allowed to run around for about 40 minutes or so before I put them back in and see she's ready to go to bed 
and they all start getting tired at about the same time. So crating is not cruel. You guys are going to get your pups home. You'll want to put them in and out of that crate 15, 20 times a day. Well, maybe not 20. 10, 15 times a day. They're going to be in and out of the crate. They're babies, and they're going to need to nap. And like babies, I don't know, for those of you who have, uh, like, have gone through the terrible two stage, which is twos, threes, and fours, when, when your children get really, really exhausted, that's when they get, their, they're at their worst. They just are crazy, can't even think straight. Your puppies will do the same thing. They'll rip and run and bite and run into stuff, and it's because they're exhausted. So put them in their crate, let them take a nap for an hour, make a rule the puppy doesn't come out of the crate until it takes a nap or is in there silently for a time. So you see Sonny back there? He's trying to get in too. He want, he's, he's like, I'm ready for bed. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. And Poppy, chewing on the... You guys have already learned that terrible thing. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You ready to go to bed, Sonny? Well, I got to finish putting your crate together then. Because you're missing a... You're missing a, um, a carpet in there. So, <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> He's ready for his morning nap. Um, so, this is missing a carpet. So, I'm going to go ahead and get that. And I also was hoping they would eat something. But, um, they may not. I waited too long to put their food down. So, shoot. Let me try that now.